Hello everyone and welcome to the second part of this week's Lightweight Java Game Library 3D Game Tutorial. And today we're going to be colouring our rectangle by programming some shaders. So let's get right into it and create a new package called shaders. And the first thing we're going to do in this package is to create the vertex and the fragment shaders. And to do this go into your file explorer, uh, go into the project into the source file and into the shaders package and create two text files one called vertex shader and the other called fragment shader and the reason we have to do this is because the shaders aren't programmed in Java as I mentioned in the last tutorial they're programmed in GLSL and we're going to program that in these text files um, we can access these text files from Eclipse if you just go into Eclipse right click on the package and refresh it you should be able to now go in there and access those text files. So let's start off with the vertex shader. The first thing we have to do is to decide what version of GLSL we're going to use and we're going to use version 4.0.0. And now we can start coding. So first thing we have to do is declare our inputs and the input to our vertex shader as I mentioned in the last tutorial is going to be the 3D vector so vec3 and it's going to be the position of the vertex that we get in from the VAO and we're just going to call this variable position. You can call it what you want, but it makes sense to call it position. And then we also have to declare our output, and we're going to do uh, a conversion from position to color for no particular reason, but it's just a good demonstration. So our output is a 3D vector called color. Then we set up the main method, and this is the method that's going to run every time a vertex is processed by this vertex shader. And now we have, to detail, we have to tell OpenGL where to render this vertex on the screen. And we do this by setting GL position. And this is a 4D vector, so we have to convert our position, which is a 3D vector, into a 4D vector. So call the constructor for VEC4. Fill in the first three components with our X, Y, Z. And then the last component you can just set to 1.0. I'll explain that last component in a future devlog, but at the moment you don't need to worry about it. Uh, you can also just do position.xyz and that will automatically fill up the first three components with xyz of position. You can also do zyx, that would just fill the first three up with the z and then the y and then the x. Or you can just put position in there and GLSL will know automatically to fill up those first three components of this 4D vector with the x, y and z components of the position. So now we're going to create our output color. So that's a 3D vector, so create a new VEC3. And the red component of the color is going to be the X position, the X coordinate plus 0 0.5, because we don't want any negative colors. The green value is just going to be 1, and then the blue value is going to be the Y position plus 0 0.5. And that will create a different color for each of the vertices of our rectangle. So now let's go into the fragment shader and again we have to just put the version up there which is version 400 again and same as vertex shader first we have to declare our inputs and as I said in the last tutorial the input to the fragment shader is the output from the vertex shader which was a vec3 called color so the input to the fragment shader has to be a VEC3 called color and then the output of the fragment shader is the color of the pixel that it's currently processing and that's going to be a VEC4 color and an RGBA and we're going to call it out color so what we've got to do now is to convert our input color to the output color so another main method and we're just going to do a very simple thing here we're just going to set the out color to a 4D vector which is just going to be the color and then we're going to make the alpha component just one. So I just want to give a quick recap of what we've just programmed here. So we've got our quad with its four vertices and we have that stored away in an attribute array in a VAO and the vertex shader that we've just programmed has access to these positions in the form of that vec3 position variable in the code. So the vertex shader executes for each vertex and uses this input position to first tell the GPU where on the screen the vertex should be rendered. And we did this by setting the GL position variable. 
Then the vertex shader calculates a color for each vertex based on the position of that vertex. And we did this by setting the color's red component to the X position plus 0.5, setting the green component to 1, and setting the blue component to the Y position plus 0.5. So the vertex shader does this for each vertex and produces these color outputs. Now the fragment shader executes for each pixel to decide what color each pixel of the quad should be. And the input color for each run of the fragment shader is a linearly interpolated color value of the vertex shader output colors. And we've just set up the output pixel color to be this interpolated input. So you can see how it all works. So hopefully the result will look something like this. So now that we've coded a shader program, we need to be able to use and access that program from our Java code. So let's create a new class called shader program and we're going to make this abstract because this class is going to represent a generic shader program containing all the attributes and methods that every shader program would have. And when we create a specific shader program, we'll create a concrete implementation of this class. So each shader program is going to have a program ID and also the IDs of the vertex shader and fragment shader that make up the program. So let's first create a method that can load up shader source code files like the two that we've just created. And this method will take in the file name of the source code file and also an int that indicates whether it's a vertex or a fragment shader. So for this method I've actually got the source code copied and I'm just going to paste it in here to keep this episode a little bit shorter. But all this method does is to open up the source code files, read in all the lines and connect them all together into one long string before creating a new vertex or fragment shader depending on the type we gave it, attaching the string of source code to it, compiling it and then printing any errors that were found in the code. And finally it returns the ID of the newly created shader. If you don't really know how the code for this method works, it's really not a problem. Once you've written this code once, you'll probably never have to change it. So it's not that important that you know exactly what's going on here. So let's now create a constructor for this class. It's going to take in the vertex file, file path for the vertex file and for the fragment file. We're going to, to use that method that we've just created to get the vertex shader ID by loading up that vertex file and we have to call that the type is GL vertex shader for the vertex shader and then we do the same for the fragment shader load it up into OpenGL get the ID by calling the method load shader putting in our fragment file and the type is GL fragment shader. So now that we've got the two IDs, we need to create a new program. And this is going to be what ties these two fragment shader and vertex shader together. So we have to do gl20.gl create program. And now we're going to attach both of the ver both the vertex shader and the fragment shader to this program. So attach shader, put in the program ID and then the vertex shader ID, and then we do the same for the fragment shader ID. So both the vertex shader and the fragment shader are now attached to this program, and we have the ID for this program, which we can use whenever we need to use this shader. And then we link it all together, GL link program and then put in the program ID and then we're just going to validate the program so that's it for the constructor pretty much now we just need to create one more method in here this is going to be an abstract method because when we create an implementation of this class it has to have this method bind attributes and that's going to link up the inputs to the shader programs to one of the attributes of the VAO that we're going to pass in and we're going to call that method from the constructor. A couple of other methods we need to add one to start the program whenever we want to use the program we have to start it by just calling gl use program and it takes in the program ID. We need another method for stopping the program which is 
just the same method but put a zero in instead of the ID of the program. And then we also need one to clean up, a bit of memory management, and this just has to delete both the shaders. So we'll just, first we'll call stop just to check that no program is currently running. Then we're going to detach both the vertex shader and the fragment shader from the program. So we'll do that once for the vertex shader and then again for the fragment shader. And then we have to delete the shaders, delete the vertex shader, and of course delete the fragment shader as well. And then finally we have to delete the program itself by calling gl delete program and putting in the program ID. So that is the shader program class almost done. One last thing, uh, we need a method to bind an attribute because it can't be done from outside this class because it needs to use the program ID. So this will take in the number of the attribute list in the VAO that we want to bind and it will take in the variable name in the shader code that we want to bind that attribute to. Then this just takes in the program ID and then the index of that attribute and this, the name of the variable in the shader code. So now let's go ahead and create an implementation of this for the shaders that we've just created. So we're going to call this static shader because we're going to be using this in the future to create all our static models. Um, this will extend shader program and then it will want you to create a constructor and that bind attributes method. We're not going to take in a vertex shader string. We're not going to take in the file name. We're going to declare them up here. And then just put in the file path of that vertex shader file that we created earlier, which is source slash shaders slash vertex shader dot text and then do exactly the same for the fragment shader but call it fragment shader fragment file and then fragment shader dot text and then we can put these into the constructor for the shader program and finally we just have to do the bind attributes and we're going to bind attribute 0 of the VAO because that's where we stored our position, our vertex positions. And we're going to connect it to the position variable, the position input in the vertex shader. So now we can go into our game loop and we can create a new static shader so that we can use it when we're rendering. And just import that. As so well as that, we've got to remember to clean it up once the game's been closed, which is just shader.cleanup. And before we render, we want to use the program, we want to start it, and we'll stop it again once the rendering has finished. So shader.start before the rendering, and shader.stop after the rendering. And that should now work. And there you go. You can see here that a color has been calculated for each vertex, and then those colors have been spread over the whole surface of the quad by the fragment shader. And you can play around with the settings a bit if you want to see what other colors you can get. So you could divide the output color of the fragment shader by three and that would make all the colors a lot darker. Or instead you could go into the vertex shader and you could change the green component of the output color to zero instead of one and that will give you some other colors but yeah just play around with it see what you can get and just make sure that you understand what's going on really so that is it for this week next week we're going to be texturing the quad using our new knowledge of shaders and that video will be out next saturday if you're interested in game development then you might consider checking out some of my game development log videos there's a link on the screen now to yesterday's devlog video 
but yeah, thank you guys very much for watching this video. Do subscribe if you haven't already. Have a wonderful week, and I will see you all next time.